What's up, everybody? My name is Lehua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host of podcasts across worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina. Today, we are reviewing how a realist hero rebuilt the kingdom. And if you like anime reviews, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, so you can be notified on the next upload. And if you like to support the channel, we got Patreon and channel membership. Link to those are below. We are reviewing how a realist hero rebuilt the kingdom, episode 4. And I thought world building was done. Nope, nope, nope. It was not done. There was more world building with demons. The beginning of the episode was talking about monsters. And I've noticed so far, every episode, whatever Soma is talking about in the beginning of the episode, it's going to be referred back to later on. It's going to be a theme, I want to say. Or something that we're going to need to reference to in another episode also. And the beginning of the episode was talking about monsters. And what's the difference between beasts and monsters? And then the difference were beasts, creatures of, you know, for the ecosystem. So that's the difference. And monsters, they're not important to the ecosystem. They are a mixture of different creatures. And they just came out to something that does not belong, that is not beneficial to the ecosystem. And I found that very interesting. Then, later on, we finally hear, or find out, what Tomoe said to Soma in his ear, what she whispered. And it wasn't an invasion. It wasn't that the nation was in danger. She can also converse with demons. And I think she was like, oh, I need to let him know about this because... He's like, okay, you can talk to animals. I don't know what to do with that. And she's like, well, I can also. And I could see why she was really hesitant about saying that she could talk to demons. Because if people found out that she could talk to demons, people who are afraid, scared, can automatically think that she is a demon. Or she's like a traitor. And that could endanger her, her family, and all the mystic wolves. So it was very smart of her to not say anything. Because normally, some people will like, well, I can do this. I can talk to demons. And then it totally backfires on them. But her, because of her shyness and her wariness of things, she knew that this was something that uh, you don't really want to share broadcast throughout the whole nation. Because remember, she was in the announcement of, of all the gifted people and has been broadcasted. And... This also leads to demons. Apparently, demons don't speak the common language of everybody else. They speak something else, and it's very barbaric. And it's sort of like their own tongue. Everybody else in the world doesn't understand demons. And Tomoe being able to communicate changes everything because this can lead to negotiations. And then there is also an explanation of what demons are. They're actually monsters. So monsters are not part of the ecosystem. And demons are monsters that have taken up mannerisms and such like a person, like a human, like mankind. Because there's not only humans. We got beast people too, you know? So other than that, they have their own language and everybody else in the world who aren't demons doesn't understand it it's incomprehensible to them but for tomoe because she can talk to bees and monsters are like bees but they're not part of the ecosystem she can talk to the demons and she was only able to find that out because back at home when she was foraging in the forest she encountered a demon and that's where she learned that she can talk to them. And the demon actually warned her, told her to run away. And um, this is also leading to the thought that that's why the mystic wolves were able to survive and run away because Tomoe was warned. So that's pretty cool. And that also means that the demons aren't that bad. If they were able to warn people, that means that they have a conscience, right? So back to the communicating with demons, how it changes everything. And we don't know why they are invading, why they took over that whole northern area. I'm thinking that these demons 
who are evolved monsters. I'm thinking evolved monsters. Somehow they came about. A lot of demons came about. I'm thinking there's something that encouraged monsters to become demons. And the population just grew so much that they needed someplace to go. Because they did explain that all of a sudden demons appeared. Well, all of a sudden, monsters became demons. That's what it means. But the thing is, why? Why did the monsters become demons? That is something I think we're going to find out throughout this series. I don't know when because I thought this whole series was going to focus on <laughs> El Free, <laughs> this nation, how to rebuild it. I thought this whole series was going to be about that. But I'm thinking that we're going to learn more about demons. So in my reaction of this, I was saying, okay, we can't really go over, dive into the whole demon thing, negotiate with them because we need to make this kingdom strong first, this nation strong, because if anything hits it, we won't even have a chance to dive into the demon stuff, okay? So the thing that they need to work on is finances. To help with the finances, they need to work on the food. So the next part of this episode was a food program. It's not just a food program. So they decided to have a broadcasting that they'll have frequently called the King's Brilliant Lunch. And what they're going to do is they're going to share information to the citizens of the nation to help improve their lives. So the first thing is food. What they're doing in this first episode, I guess you call it episode of the program, is food. So they got Pancho to get all these food, all these stuff that you can cook. And they actually used an item that we all are familiar with in RPGs, which is a storage item. And it was a stack <laughs> that was part of the hero gear set that could hold a lot of stuff and things tend to not spoil in it. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I thought I needed to talk about that in this review. So they had that. They used Poncho to use that. Yeah, they had Poncho to use that. And he brought in all these ingredients. And when I was watching it, my assumption was things to import into different areas so they can trade and whatnot. But it seems like are things that they can use in their area. So it's not just one small area. It's not the, where Soma is. It's the whole nation. And we got from the mountains to the sea. And each area needs to learn how to use the resources in their own vicinity. And the first thing they showed was an octopus. And my first thought was, <laughs> how are you going to transport that? If you're going to bring that into the kingdom where Soma is, uh, it's, it might spoil. <laughs> but no, they show citizens who live near a harbor, the shore, and they're like, oh, didn't we just catch like 10 of those? We can, we can prepare that because in this King's Brilliant Lunch, they showed how to prepare it. So they brought in three things, I believe. Uh, an octopus, a uh, bark, which is found in a lot of forestry areas, which was related to the elf chick who is like a warrior. She's going to be like part of the military and stuff. And then they had, I believe, oh, miso soup. And they had like a fourth thing that they didn't show us. We already talked about the octopus and Soma actually prepared that. He, you know, boiled it and then he covered it in batter and then fried it. Then they show the tree roots, I believe. I believe it's called tree roots. If it's not, please correct me in the comments. And they sprinkled it with like salt and sugar. And oh my gosh, I feel like every anime is doing this now. They did the whole sprinkle thing from that guy who went viral who makes like briskets and whatnot, where he's like seasoning his meat. They did that. They had Soma do that. I was like, oh snap. We did something mainstream here. Then we got to this part where they showed grasshoppers <laughs> that you can eat. And they're like really brown and crispy looking. And I'm thinking, yeah, you can have grasshoppers. Yeah. Okay. All the people who are eating it, they're like, ugh, it's gross. Tomoe, the mystic wolf girl, she's eating it. She's like, ooh, yummy. This is like, it tastes just like the bean whatevers. And someone's like, bean? What do you mean? And Pancha explained that the mystic wolves have this thing that's called mush water and it's actually fermented beans. And y'all, 
all of us who have watched anime for a very, very, very long time, whenever we hear about fermented beans and water that looks brown, what do we think? Soy sauce. Mm hmm it was soy sauce and they make miso soup and as soon as Soma heard about that he ate that grasshopper and he cried and the first year like is he crying because it's nasty but he was crying because it reminded him of home I was not expecting Soma to cry I didn't realize how much he missed home or maybe he didn't realize how much he missed home because he was so concentrated on his work in this kingdom that when he actually tasted something that reminded him of home all the memories related to it dishes eating with people just came to his brain and he started crying it made me think okay you miss home more than you realize and it makes him more human and i'm wondering if he's going to have any attachment in this kingdom which i'm hoping i'm hoping he will <laughs> And then at the end of this program, they're like, okay, here's the last dish. And they don't show the dish, but they show everybody else's reactions. It's like, what? It was like the previous episode. What? <laughs> Cliffhangers, right? And another thing before I end this review, I want to talk about, there's like this one part of the episode with Soma sewing. He's sewing like a doll and it looked like a ninja, a ninja plushie. And I'm wondering if he's going to use his living poltergeist magic technique on it for something else in another episode. That's what I'm thinking because when they showed that, they showed his living poltergeist on the pins doing the work in the office. I'm thinking that's going to happen. What do you guys think? And that concludes the review for How a Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom Episode 4. If you've seen the episode and there's anything I missed, please let me know in the comments. If you haven't seen it, what's your impression of it? What do you think? Let me know about the video in the comments below. If you want to talk outside of YouTube, there's a Discord. Link is in the description. I also stream on twitch.tv slash Superfina. People who watch these videos, do you like to stop by the stream? Have a one-on-one -on -one real time conversation? You guys are welcome. Please come by. <laughs> Outside of YouTube and Twitch, I host podcasts across the world where we talk about anime, manga, and other things we're interested in. If you like podcasts like that, links to the podcast is in the description. We're available on all platforms. Other than that, my name is Lihua, and this is the Superfina channel, reviewing how a realist hero rebuilt the kingdom episode 4. Hope you guys like this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Laters! Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there and I will see you on the next video. This bump.